Good day. My name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some of the cold damages that we get in northern Nevada. Crown gall is caused by a bacterium in the soil, which is ubiquitously found inside the vines themselves. The bacteria are activated by cold stress, particularly severe cold stress, such as ice formation or low, low temperatures. Therefore, you would not find this disease in, expressed in California, although the bacterium resides within the vine. The bacteria grow in the vine, causing this crown gall, which is like a cancer. The disease starts off by forming a gall in the vine, which progresses over a period of about two years, resulting in the severe symptoms that you are seeing in these photos. This plugs the xylem vessels and the vine dies back, typically midway through the second season. Minor symptoms are a reduction in growth of the shoots uh, on the cordon. Usually the symptoms are observed at the base of the trunk near the soil. It is rare to see them up in the cordon as in this photo. This causes dieback in the vine and you have to train a new shoot as in this photo up past the blockage in the trunk, forming a new trunk and bypassing the tumor. These photos are from the year 2012, but the actual cold damage was caused in 2009, where we had minus six degrees Fahrenheit on December 9th. The University Experimental Vineyard is a randomized block design with six blocks. Three of those blocks were drought stress grapes and three of those blocks were well watered. There are 12 varieties in those blocks with 15 vines for each variety. In this figure, you can see a tally of the number of vines for each variety that were affected by the crown gall in 2012. The white bars represent the well watered vines and the orange bars represent the water deficit vines. And each of these bars represents the means of three different blocks. You can see that there are differences between varieties, but no essential differences between water deficit. These differences will not only reflect differences in cultivars, but differences in how fast they went into dormancy. As this event occurred on December 9th, it was early in the winter and the vines were not in full dormancy as they would be in the middle of January. So those varieties that went into dormancy more quickly were more likely to be tolerant to these cold temperatures. While this reflects the response in the fall, these results might be quite different in the middle of winter or in the spring. So with those caveats in mind, we can see here that Cabernet Franc and Merlot were much more susceptible and had more winter injury, whereas Lemberger and Riesling were much less. I would not put much stock in the Sauvignon Blanc and Tempranillo data as they were newly planted vines in, and so the data are somewhat suspect. Later on, Tempranillo proved to be a poor varietal for this area as it did not do well in surviving winters. There was a total dieback of the vines that had to be replaced. So this damage represents the severe damage that occurs when it finally dies back. In the previous year, what you might see would not necessarily be visible crown gall, but some swelling in the trunk and poor growth in your shoots on top, which may be an indication that they're getting crown gall. Typically, it's in the second year 
about halfway through the season, they're looking okay. In the middle of the summer, they just suddenly die back. And there's nothing you can do about it except train up a new shoot from below. There'll be sh shoots that will come up the next year that will come out of the ground and train them back up to the wire. If you get them down low enough, you bypass this crown gall damage. And this is one of the advantages of keeping the grapes growing on their own roots rather than on rootstock. It's rare now that we get temperatures below minus 10. Therefore, most of the time the vines survive the cold spell, but they have injury to the vines and they'll require a couple of years recovery period to get back up and start producing fruit again. Other cold problems that we've had have been typically in the spring, and that is our most severe issue, which is frost damage during the spring after bud break. With the, if the buds are still dormant or only swelling, they can withstand temperatures below 28 degrees Fahrenheit. But once that bud has broken and temperatures get down to about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, then you will see significant bud damage or even leaf damage if you've got fully developed leaves there. These photos represent frost damage to buds that had burst and the ones that are green represent buds that had remained dormant due to delayed pruning. So you want to try to avoid frost by delayed pruning to keep your buds dormant as long as possible to get away from any risk of frost damage. Clearly, we have to worry about those false springs that come in February or March that will start to wake up the vines and get them excited about growing too early in the season where a subsequent cold spell will come in and damage them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative of what you may have, although with our global warming, this may become a much less problem in the future than we've had in the past. Bye.